Hello, I'm Linda Ann Smith, video creator for Color Art Products, and today I'm going to be working with Silks Acrylics Glazes and One Radiant Gel to try to paint my favorite flower, which we always call the Rubrum Lily, but some people call them Stargazers. I'll be working today on a black gesso primed canvas. It's a 9 inch by 12 inch canvas. I used to draw some of my sketches, uh, my guideline sketches with chalk, but I've discovered that these Derwent watercolor pencils work really well for me because if I make a mistake, I'll, actually I'll make a mistake and I'll take it off for you and show you what I do. I can draw a much more accurate line with the pencils than I can with the chalk. And like I said, if I make a mistake, I can get rid of it also. so. Here I do a vertical line with an X across it for the center of the petals. I already know that I'm going to take some artistic license with these because I want them to look a little different than the ones in the picture. And then I don't like exact copies either, but I have my guide picture and uh, I'll be referring to that when I have questions about how something should look. So here I begin to sketch in the petals. These are just guidelines. Uh, if I don't like something, like I said, there's a very easy way to erase these. So I'm going to put three in a Y shape that are kind of on top, and then these others are sitting behind. And you don't usually see, quite often they fold out so much that they fold under, so you don't see the tip end of the flower. You see where it bends back. Okay, let's say that I draw in a stem and some little leaves, and I don't really care for the position. I need them to come further over on the canvas to fill the canvas. I don't want my lily right in the center, but I want my leaves to fill up some. So I'm just going to take a paintbrush and some water, and I'm just going to dab over it and make it disappear. I use a little bit of a scrubbing motion here. And when that's dry, I can begin to sketch in a new stem that looks a little better on the canvas. One characteristic that uh, I like in the Rubrum Lily, or this Stargazer, is that it's the petals are lighter on the outside edge than they are in the center. So I'm using gesso and going over each outside edge of each petal because I know that I'm going to want that light and uh, on this black canvas that might take a while to do. So I'm, I'm lightening it right now with white gesso. While that gesso dries, I'll paint in the stems with moss green silks acrylic glaze. I painted these leaves in with an acrylic brush that had stiff uh, bristles, and then I went back and used a watercolor brush to blend the paint out. I quite often hold two brushes in the same hand at the same time, so anyway, so I'm getting the stem and I'm coming right around the edge of the canvas. I extended the leaves where they come to the edge and the stem right over onto the sides of the canvas. I found this moss green to be just a little bit thicker than what I needed so I just added a tiny bit of water to thin that out. One of the first things I noticed about Silk's uh, acrylic glazes is that uh, some of the glazes are very thin, like the red tones, are very thin watery. Don't worry about this, that's not a mistake. It's just the characteristics of the pigments and you'll find that they work equally well. You're gonna notice that your reddish tones are thinner and uh, they don't need to be thinned out, but sometimes some of the others do need to be thinned for what I'm doing. It depends on what I'm doing. The wonderful thing about glazes is you just work one layer over another layer and the more you work, the more beautiful it becomes, the more shimmery and gorgeous the colors are. I mix the tiniest bit of Love Struck with some of the moss green and that balanced that thickness out. Cut down the intensity or brightness of the color and you're going to hear over and over, never, never mix complementary colors. Red and green are straight across from each other on the color wheel so you can't mix those. Well, you can. You just have to mix them carefully and not in equal amounts. If you mix a tiny bit of one color with its complement, it will tone down that intensity of the color and uh, give you delightful colors. Do you see that color I used to paint the very center area of the flower, that little star shape in the center that crosses over each other? 
That is the same moss green, but it's over white instead of over black. Total different color. Working on a black substrate with silks really enhances that shimmer. I continue to work with the uh, silks acrylic glazes, adding jasmine, and the most delightful color. It is a violet fuchsia pink color. As I built up the layers, I also went back and used some of the gesso in it, working back and forth with gesso and with these two colors, Love Struck and Jasmine. Since gesso is an opaque, uh, you can't see through it, opaque color, um, the white you can't see through, it's going to kill your shimmer in your color art paints. So I always made sure that I came back on top of it with uh, a final coat of the silks acrylic glazes because I want that shimmer in almost every place on this flower. The blending back and forth of these three things uh, really was relaxing and uh, it was nice to see the, the flower coming to life. Here I'm adding another layer of moss green to the center area so that I can get more shimmer in this area and uh, I add a few more little lines to it because I need lines for the stamen in the center. I'm adding the silk acrylic glaze called Spicy Tomato. It's kind of an orangish color and that's the color that, that uh, many of the stamen have on them in the center. There's also one large, I'm not sure of the scientific term, I can't remember my biology, but uh, there's one very large one, and that's what I put in just there, uh, right in the very center of the flower. The color I'm using here is um, Vavum Red, and it's this is actually one of the Radiant Gels Dimensional Paints because it just seemed to be the exact right color to go on this flower. One of the things I was going to tell you though about the stamen is in real life when we brought these flowers into our home from the garden we always cleaned those off because they have loads of pollen and it got all over everything if you even touched it. So uh, most of my flowers those were just plucked off but I'm going to leave them in this because I think it looks very pretty the variation of color. I wanted to liven the leaves just a little bit so I pulled out another silk acrylic glaze called Golden Monarch and uh, touched that into areas on top of the leaf and it really gave it a little more life. 
I'll show you close-ups of the end product here in just a moment, but I would like to invite you to, if you haven't already subscribed to Color Arts Channel, subscribe to them. If you haven't already subscribed to my personal channel, that's Linda Ann Smith's. I'll put all the information below in the video in the description box. And Color Art has some Facebook pages. There's always something going on. There's sales. There's challenges. And so you need to look for those too. And um, I'm on the video team now, but they also have a blog at Color Art that you should really check out because the design team there is very talented. Anything that you can do to help our channels, we'd always appreciate. That includes like, comment, share, and of course, subscribe. Thank you for watching.